Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and welcome back to our review of Eric Dubay's Level. This is part three where we're going to talk about the moon. Now, as you may recall in the last episode, our intrepid hero questioned his own beliefs about the sun and was guided with his mentor to a better understanding of the small and local sun. Today, we're going to see him tackle the moon. So, let's cue up the music and get going. Now, we're going to lead off with a long-disproved flat-Earth myth, one that's in violation of the laws of thermodynamics, and that is that moonlight somehow is cold. So let's see how Eric presents this and attempts to recruit additional lost souls to the flat-Earth movement. So once again, I'm going to pop over to the side and follow along in the script. So what about the moon? We all witness the moon only illuminating the local clouds around it. That is because it is also a local light, but one with opposite effects from the sun. As we can all agree, shade from the sun is cooler than direct sunlight. But did you know, the moon's shade is actually warmer than direct moonlight? The moon produces cold light, something the science priests must have forgotten to teach us all about in school. Not only that, but at times, we can see stars through the moon, proving it is not some solid rock 238,900 miles away. In the 60s, true science regarding the moon was the shadow band topic of its era. I must consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. Well, now one thing, you have a theory about the moon and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock but it is a plasma, cosmic plasma. Gravitational theories are out and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. This fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958 and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. The, and the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. <laughs> People actually believe they walked on the moon, talked with Nixon, played golf, drove a car, and planted a flag. If you really believe that Neil Armstrong took the first step, then why do you give any credit to the cameraman already there waiting for him? <laughs> These guys were all U.S. military men coerced into acting. They wanted the money and power that came with the deal, of course. The problem was, they were terrible actors. They couldn't even pretend to be excited, knowing they were lying to the world. But the show had to go on. Michael Collins and Neil Armstrong rarely spoke in public about it. But there was one man not shy about lying to your face the spokesperson for the Apollo deception. It's my pleasure to present Colonel Edwin Alden. No handshake, hug, smile. Their facial expressions are similar to those experiencing constipation, not celebrating an accomplishment. So let me get this straight. Your entire argument is based on the fact that the Apollo astronauts weren't enthusiastic or cheery after their accomplishment? I think they were. 
I think after days and days and days of news conferences, they were getting a little tired of it. And I think the fact that they are all very technically oriented military men means that perhaps they're not quite the bubbly personality that you are, Eric. But that's an interesting theory that you have there, Eric. Kind of like a rainbow unicorn kitten with butterfly wings is cute and adorable. That's what I think of your theory. That I say to you today what no men have been privileged to say before. We walked on the moon. I mean, they couldn't pay them enough to look up and smile? Society has always debated these planned Apollo events since day one, never imagining then that almost 50 years later, they haven't had the balls to fake another. But the thing that you're overlooking, Eric, is they didn't have the technology to fake it in the first place. They had to actually go there. But I see you have another expert queued up. I can't wait for this one. As a tattooer, I talk to hundreds of people a month, and people are actually really starting to wake up with everything that's going on right now. I mean, people are sick of the lies. This is the biggest deception ever. The globe, the spinning ball globe is the biggest deception. If NASA was legit, literally all they would have to do is one thing, take one of their satellites, zoom in on someone in Australia, upside down, driving a car, or in the ocean, swimming upside down. That's all they would have to do, just zoom in. You know, one thing I love about the Flat Earth is they come out with all of these conditions that they say have to be met in order for them to believe it. Yet, when you ask them on it, they cannot tell you specifically why they need that particular condition. So, for example, when Blue Marble Science did his Cavendish experiment, Flat Earthers just went wild over that because, you know, oh my God, he didn't use wood balls, he didn't use granite balls, he didn't paint the balls blue, he didn't paint the balls red, he didn't put it all in a Faraday cage, and then all of a sudden it had to be in a vacuum. Now the bottom line is mass is attracting mass. Tell me what difference it would make, what color the masses were. Were they red paint or blue paint? Would it be different if it was granite or steel? He did it with an eight pack of Coke. You know, I mean, is, is an eight pack of Coke magnetic? And if not, why does he need a $10,000 Gauss meter to prove that magnetic effects are not present? That's your job, chief. You raise the objection. You demonstrate that it's meaningful and has a bearing on the outcome of the experiment. You show me how somebody swimming, quote unquote, upside down in Australia, does that mean their feet and their little hands are sticking out of the water and their heads underneath the water? Is that what you mean by upside down? Tell me how that's going to make a difference. And by the way, do you think we don't look at the Earth? You ever hear of spy satellites, Chief? You ever hear of Google Earth? So crack on, my man. Crack on. I think it's hilarious that NASA will straight up tell you we destroyed the technology to go to the moon. You know what other technology we destroyed? Analog cell phones and machines to read inch and a half magnetic tape. We just can't do that anymore because we don't have the technology. We destroyed it and it would be a painful process to rebuild it so that we could use an analog cell phone and an inch and a half magnetic drive tape recorder again. After 50 years of lying to humanity and perpetrating this giant fraud, he's sick of the lie. And he, his conscience, he had a moment of humility, and his conscience wouldn't let him lie to this little eight year old girl. Actually, that was not a crisis of conscience, that was creative editing. Because if you actually see that interview as I did, Buzz Aldrin was very clear. We didn't go back to the moon because we didn't go. Why didn't we go? Because the will to go wasn't there. The funding wasn't there. That was not the cool thing to do at the time. We changed the goals of our space program from one of momentous accomplishments such as landing on the moon 
to using space routinely with the space shuttle and servicing satellites and getting used to working for long periods of time in space. We did that very well. This silly glow model with water magically attached to it, spinning at a thousand miles an hour, shooting around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour, and rocketing through the universe at a half a million miles an hour is just the goofiest, silly thing that I've ever heard in my life. Now, I think it's important to just take a quick pause right now because we're at a critical spot in this recruitment tool that Eric DeBay came up with. First of all, his goal is to recruit people to the Flat Earth Conspiracy. Who are his targets? They're people that don't have a tremendous science background, that aren't used to dealing with science and engineering and mathematics and technology. These are people that are mystified by these things. So when you start throwing huge numbers at them, you're not trying to confuse them. You're trying to confirm the fact that these numbers are incomprehensible. I don't have any problem with the numbers. Most people don't have any problem with numbers like that. Quantum Eraser seems to have a little trouble saying very large numbers, but most of us understand the concept of a billion versus a trillion or even more. We understand scientific notation. We can do the math. It's not a problem for us. Eric Dubay is targeting people that can't do the math that can't comprehend these huge numbers. Have a listen to this next segment. They want you to think you're a monkey man, a purposeless accident created by nothing, that exploded from a big bang that was created, not by scientists, by a priest, mind you, while they steal $58 million a day in taxpayers' money to show you cartoons. So there you have it, folks. He's hearkening back to the Young Earth Creationist movement the biblical literalists. And you're the type of fervent religious person that believes in the Bible literally and that evolution and dinosaurs and the age of the earth and all of the other accomplishments of science are simply a denial of your God. This is the movement for you because they believe everything was created. You've found a home. Space travel completely invalidates that. Space travel shows the true shape of the Earth, which, I might add, is spherical. They can't comprehend these. They cannot allow them to exist, so the only thing that they can do is deny it. Eric is telling them, come to us. That's the way we feel, too. You can be comfortable here. Join us. Buy a t-shirt. You know, I see the ISS go overhead frequently. I saw it last night. I saw the Starlink satellites go overhead, 60 of them in a row. I've seen satellites in my telescope, and I found those satellites because I knew exactly where they were because we understand orbital mechanics, and I could point the telescope directly to them. Not a problem. You can't do that if you don't know why they're there. And the reason they're there is they were launched into orbit and their orbit is very well known. So, your arguments are falling short here, Chief. But I see the population that you're trying to appeal to, and I can see how that population might buy them. Those of us that actually know something about science don't, which is why you don't see a lot of scientists in the Flat Earth Movement. Bye, 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 the science guy. 